Time for some more Mario manga. This time, let's take a look at Dr. Mario. This and other stories based on older Mario games were published by Kodansha Media from 1989 to 1998 and are not related to Super Mario Adventures or Super Mario Kun. Besides just liking the game, I'm choosing Dr. Mario because it's a game that doesn't really have a storyline. I mean, for example, in Super Mario Land, you know that Mario will travel across many lands and save Princess Daisy. But what kind of story would a puzzle game have? In the manual to Dr. Mario, it says that Mario is working in the virus control center of the Mushroom Kingdom. And in the ending of the game, the viruses leave Earth in a UFO. So, will the manga follow the game? Let's take a look. The Famicom and Game Boy versions were released in Japan in July 1990. And the weekly comics ran at the same time as its release, with the compiled book released in October 1990. The book, like always, explains how the game works and gives advice on how to play the game. Is it really possible to erase eight blocks at one time? I guess so. The soundtrack to this video is courtesy of AC Menes. Be sure to check out Meet the Light, available now. The first story is called The Laughing Viruses Are Born and begins with Bowser, King of the Koopa, mixing an evil potion in his castle. Wait, let's stop right here. Bowser is not in the game, and according to the game, the viruses are from another planet. But it does say right here that this scenario has not been made into a game. At the same time, Princess Peach is holding a worldwide botanical expo at the castle. Hmm, when did we first see Peach's castle? Super Mario 64? Or was it earlier? This kind of looks like it. Some of the flowers parody other famous characters in Japan, and Mario remarks that this weird one kind of looks like Peach. Then Princess Daisy comes in to show off her flower arrangement, which shows Daisy and Mario getting married. For the sake of explaining continuity, this manga series came right after Super Mario Land, and it feels like a continuation of the story from there in some places. In that series, there's a little bit of jealousy between Peach and Daisy over Mario. A strange woman wearing a babushka and an apron with the letter K on it shows up and wants to enter her flower, a piranha plant, into the expo. But instantly Mario questions who she is and exposes Bowser's identity. The piranha plants start coughing up viruses. When the citizens of the Mushroom Kingdom breathe them in, they start laughing uncontrollably. Mario covers his mouth and runs away. He hides in his house, while the sky is filled with viruses. He tries to develop a cure for the laughing virus and experiments on samples in petri dishes at his home. Meanwhile, on TV, the news reports that the only place that is not infected is Mushroom Mountain. Hey! The border of the Mushroom Kingdom is shaped like a mushroom. Neat! Mario assumes that something in the area is keeping people healthy and tries to leave in secret, but Peach and Daisy find out and tag along. They hop in Mario's airplane from Super Mario Land called the Sky Pop. I guess he kept it from the last adventure. While we're on it, the design of Daisy comes from the Super Mario Land manual, including the dark crown. And Sky Pop is mentioned too. They get there quickly, and a strange figure shows up and offers Mario an apple. Peach and Daisy eat it and get infected with the laughing virus. As you would have guessed, it's a trap set up by Bowser, and he unleashes an attack on the villagers of Mushroom Mountain. While fleeing Bowser's attack, Mario finds a giant mushroom, which is what the villagers of the town pray to for protection. Mario decides to dig it up and use it as a cure for the laughing virus. They put pieces of the mushroom into capsules and launch a successful attack. Then Mario takes off in the Sky Pop and does an air raid over Mushroom Mountain. The powers of the mushroom cure everyone in the Mushroom Kingdom of the laughing virus, and by the end of the day, the newsman on TV announces that the outbreak is over. Mario goes home and heads to bed. All has been made right. 
But unbeknownst to Mario, one virus escapes in the middle of the night and is ready to make trouble all over again. The next chapter is called The Micro Battle to Save Luigi, Part 1, and continues the story the day after Mario cured the laughing virus. After one escapes, it comes in contact with a mysterious figure, who is actually Bowser, and he casts a spell on it which allows it to mutate and take the form of the virus characters that appear in the game Dr. Mario. If he's right outside Mario's house while he's sleeping, why doesn't Bowser just kill him right there? It would be so easy! All the commotion outside wakes up Mario, and Bowser orders the newly formed viruses to attack. They fly in his mouth. But wait! It's not actually Mario, it's Luigi! He took Mario's nightcap and wore it to bed. How would the viruses, who were just created, know who was whom anyway? And isn't that the nightcap from Super Mario USA? The viruses get in Luigi's stomach and get to work. Mario gives Luigi the mushroom cure that he used yesterday, but it just doesn't work. It has to be in capsule form. They take an ambulance to Mushroom Hospital, and Dr. Kuribo says there's no hope for Luigi. Just then, Bowser appears on TV and announces that the virus will kill Luigi by noon today, and Bowser will cure him before then, but only if Peach surrenders the Mushroom Kingdom to him. This makes Peach so mad she throws a chair at the TV. For whatever reason, Bowser is hiding inside the TV. I guess Bowser doesn't have the power to take over the airwaves, or maybe just not the studio space. Mario and Peach suit up and hop into the Marine Pop to save Luigi. Somehow, the Marine Pop has the power to shrink them down to microscopic size. I don't know where Daisy went, but she's gone from the rest of the story. Inside Luigi, the Marine Pop shoots capsules filled with the Miracle Mushroom from Mushroom Mountain. But they soon find themselves overwhelmed by the number of viruses and plan an escape. They call on Dr. Kuribo for help, but he's eating lunch and not paying attention. He scrambles around and drops some pepper, which makes Luigi sneeze them out. There are now three hours left until Luigi will succumb to the laughing virus. Mario and Peach work hard to figure out how to beat them. They develop six types of capsules of different color combinations to defeat the virus. Nice that the story is following the game, but they don't really explain why this will work. Also, color pages would help here so nicely. Once again, they shrink down and prepare to save Luigi. Mario and Peach start blasting away, but it's just not working. The capsules are piling up, but none of them are having any effect on the viruses. Luigi's condition is getting worse as another hour passes. Luigi starts going into laughing convulsions. One even sends him through the hospital roof. Since Mario and Peach are inside of him, any movement shakes them around too. The shaking also rattles around the viruses, and four of the same color line up, which sends the viruses into a panic. After all, in the game, four in a row of the same color wipes the viruses out. Mario figures this out and tells Peach to aim the capsules so that four of the same color capsules and same color viruses are connected. In scenes reminiscent of the game, the viruses start going down one by one. Mario calls back to Dr. Kuribo to tell him that they are winning the battle and should expect to return soon. But Dr. Kuribo tells him that the viruses are building up in Luigi's brain and that they can't leave just yet. We're halfway through the book. When we come back, one hour remains and the race to save Luigi is on.
Chapter 3 picks up right where Chapter 2 ends. If you're wondering why they just don't combine it all into one story, remember that this book, and others, were compiled from weekly comics in Bone Bone Magazine, so the way that they were written were for a weekly format, and it's just not quite the same as a full book. Mario and Peach have eradicated the laughing virus in Luigi's stomach, but Dr. Kuribo says that there's an outbreak of the virus in his brain. There's about one hour left to go until the virus kills Luigi. Peach and Mario are aware of the time limit and rush to the scene of the outbreak to try and save Luigi in time. Remember that Mario and Peach are in the marine pop from Super Mario Land and are shrunk down to a microscopic size floating around inside Luigi's body. Despite this, Bowser has somehow snuck along and is inside Luigi's brain as well. I'm gonna just stop here for a minute and say that the next 30 or so pages are very surreal and very weird. If it wasn't already weird enough. So buckle up. There's all kinds of food flying around in Luigi's temporal lobe. Ice cream, fried shrimp, curry. Curry! Luigi tells Dr. Curryboe that he's hungry. And as soon as he eats, the food disappears from the area where Mario and Peach are standing. And yeah, Bowser too. The viruses have camped out and are dancing on Luigi's neural pathways, and it makes Luigi freak out and do crazy things. Mario tells the viruses that they're doomed because he knows that four in a row of the same color will eradicate them. In all the commotion, Bowser takes the capsule gun and then kidnaps Princess Peach and leaves in the Marine Pop. Mario realizes he's got less than an hour to go and must save Luigi first, then rescue Princess Peach afterwards. Mario and the viruses battle. Mario whittles them down, but just like the game itself, it takes a long time to clear them all. 30 minutes are left. Luigi has made peace with the fact that he's about to die and wants to go out reading manga. Of course he's reading Bon Bon, the magazine which featured this exact comic. Now, I'm no brain specialist, but my guess is whatever Luigi is seeing or thinking will appear as a real physical thing in his brain. Since Bon Bon published this story, it would only make sense that Luigi would read it and then come across the Dr. Mario Guide to Victory. Mario uses it to his advantage. Bowser makes a desperate move and slams into Luigi's gray matter, trying to knock him down and let time run out. Peach is able to fight off Bowser a little bit, and she steers the marine pop into some neural pathways and uses them to bounce out of Luigi's head. Outside, Bowser uses his fire breath to torch the guidebook. Meanwhile, Mario is doing his best to battle the viruses, but there's only 10 minutes left until they take over completely. Time is ticking down. Mario calls out to Luigi and says it's too dark to see and for him to think up something, anything to give him enough light to finish fighting. Luigi goes back into his memories with Mario and Peach. What he conjures up are scenes from the past where Peach and Luigi were together. A few are of him being jealous of Mario, and a few are from Super Mario Bros. 3. At the time, that would have been the last game that Mario and Luigi did together. But there's just one minute left until Luigi is finished. Peach takes one desperate final action and says that if Bowser can save Luigi, she'll marry him and make him the king of the Mushroom Kingdom. Bowser says it's his dream to marry Peach, but it doesn't matter. Luigi, and Mario as well, will die in one minute anyway, and he'll take over the kingdom. Peach says to Luigi that he was very brave, and at the end of his life, will make one wish come true, and gives him a kiss. This makes the lights go on inside his brain, and gives Mario a final shot at taking out the last virus at the very last second. With Luigi's brain clear, the three mutated viruses are expelled from Luigi's body, as is Mario. He somehow regains his full size with no explanation and grabs the viruses and chucks them into Bowser's mouth, which now infects him with the laughing virus. This ends chapter three, but there's still one more part of the story. Chapter four is called Bowser and the One-on-One -on -one Battle. The Mushroom Kingdom is having its annual sports day. Luigi is in the lead in the high jump competition. Another little nod to the physics of the games thrown in there. 
Mario, who's still dressed as a doctor, and Peach, who's still dressed as a nurse, are running the first aid booth at the festival, when Bowser returns with his mutated laughing virus, and offers a challenge to Mario of who can clear their beaker first. Bowser rains down more viruses, and the ones you've seen in the game have now grown to a massive size. Somehow, Mario accepts the challenge and Bowser makes the first move. He clears out multiple viruses in one move, and that makes capsule fragments appear in Mario's beaker, which we all hate to have happen when we play the game. Oh, and just as a side note, the beakers are linked together by two Game Boys and a Game Link cable. Mario is able to clear out some of his beaker, and Luigi, Peach, and Dr. Kuribo help out. Bowser throws some of the viruses at them, which causes them to fall ill and also change into virus-like beings themselves. They end up swimming around in Mario's beaker making trouble for him. It looks like the beaker's full of water. I guess that makes sense because in the game Mario throws the capsules quickly, but they descend at a slower rate. The people of the Mushroom Kingdom join in to help out, and everyone throws capsules into the beaker. This mimics a Japanese sports day event called Tamaide. The battle goes back and forth until Bowser has just one virus left to clear. The subjects of the Mushroom Kingdom launch Mario into the beaker, and he uses the capsules to connect him with Peach, Luigi, and Dr. Kuribo. It clears the beaker and cures them as well. Mario wins, but Bowser is a sore loser and orders the giant viruses to charge the village. Mario takes the Sports Day prize, a trophy cup full of power-up mushrooms, and eats all of them. It makes him grow to a massive size. That actually happened in New Super Mario Brothers. That's at least three times now in this book that something has happened in later Mario games. I wonder if Miyamoto read these and remembered these things. Mario gives the viruses all one punch and it sends them halfway around the world and they land in the bottom of the ocean. Bowser is hiding in a fireworks drum and Luigi lights it and sends Bowser away in a celebratory explosion. And so ends the story of Dr. Mario. A tale of bravery, weird flashbacks, and unique product placement that never happened in the actual games, but it's all in books. Oh, and uh, Mario and Dr. Mario? The same person. It's settled.